Welcome to another round of talk uh, which will be on nutrition and fluid therapy as a part of conceptual surgery. I am Dr. Jignesh Gandhi and in this talk we are going to talk about specific learning objectives which are related to the nutrition in the patient in the pre and perioperative uh, plan, what is going to happen in terms of the fluid and electrolyte imbalance of the patient, the nutritional requirement of surgical patients which is obviously very different. You remember we had talked about earlier in a talk on catabolism that there is a very high requirement in patients who undergo major surgeries and there will at the end we will be talking about different ways in which we can provide the nutritional support. So this is what is a typical guide where you can see that so many things are required in our day to day practice because we need all these nutrients together and without that we cannot sum up our fluid and electrolytes in the body. This is a very old picture in the earlier century and you can see how good the patient has maintained is what we call it as a six packs and look at the muscle nutrition is so good. So the concept of nutrition was also there in the previous era is again you can see a bunch of people having all the nutrient diets, antioxidants, the berries which take care of all the vitamins and essential fatty acids what we require in the body. A typical patient who is sick and he requires nutrition and how you can see here that there is a portion of fluid which today is replaced with terms of IV fluids or parental nutrition has been given to this patient. So look at this patient here you can see that he is grossly emaciated, he is nutritionally depleted, the fluids are depleted and these are the patients who can pose a surgical challenge when they come for major supra major surgeries. So if you see this surgery will always influence and have some inflammation after the inflammation process you will have increased white blood cells and there will be increased energy requirements. The cellular multiplication will be very high and there will be very high nutrient needs and this ultimately would be affecting the wound healing if not taken care of. So on one side you may have a normal wound healing uh, if the patient does not have malnutrition well if you have malnutrition then it will lead to poor uh, outcomes and more complications. How does it affect the surgery? So malnutrition essentially will slow the wound healing. It will also reduce the muscle strength of the body. It will lead in the decrease in the respiratory muscle strength which is so very important. Imagine there is a patient who is on ventilator and if this patient uh, what will happen is if you are uh, having poor respiratory muscle reserve he will not breathe properly and this patient can land up into consolidation. There will be impaired cardiac function which you can see here. There will be uh, immune hypofunction and dysfunction. There will be higher morbidity and mortality and poor quality of life for this patients. So malnutrition essentially means 30% of the surgical patients who undergo a GI surgery they would require good nutrition and 60% of the patient with prolonged hospital stay would also undergo malnutrition. So it is a major chunk of population which will be undergoing malnutrition if proper care is not taken care of. Look at this cycle, this is a 12 hours of starvation. What happens if I stop eating food from today until tomorrow and for 12 hours if I do not eat anything, the first thing is that whatever food I have eaten now will start getting absorbed. Post that my plasma insulin levels will start falling. This will lead to a respirative increase in the plasma glucagon levels and my liver glycogen whatever is stored will give me approximately 200 grams of glucose to sustain myself. Now this liver is now the main producer for the glucose and it has been used by various cells like brain cells, the white blood cells, red blood cells and the renal medulla. Then what happens is that we need additional source of glucose which comes from the muscles which gives you about 500 grams and then this muscle glycogen will be broken down to lactate in the by Cori cycle and then there will be liberation of glucose. So the glucose comes from two sources one is the breakdown of the glucose glycogen and the second it comes from the muscle. So what happens if I stop eating from today for 24 hours and I do a fasting? The glycogen stores from the liver obviously we get depleted there will be gluconeogenesis in the liver. The next step is that there will be mobilization of amino acids from the muscles and they will start giving a source of glucose production approximately about 75 grams per day and the exogenous glucose will not allow the above course of action. So this does not happen when you give exogenous glucose in 24 hours of fasting. 